Hey everybody, this is Maggie from VR Chat, and today we're going to be taking a look at creating multiplayer music controls. So if you've ever created any Udon programs before, you may have noticed that uh, multiplayer doesn't work. Um, that's because we have to add some special code in Udon um, to make networking work properly. So in this tutorial, I'm going to go over how to do that. Let's take a look. So before we start working with Unity, we have to understand a concept called ownership uh, before we write any sort of networking uh, scripts in our world. And what ownership is, is um, when a room is created, um, a person joins the room and this person becomes the room master. The room master, if there's any sort of networked objects, so if we add any uh, networked objects to our room, our world, the room master, one, two, three, four, the room master will automatically own these objects, these game objects. And it's the room master's responsibility to transmit the positions and states of these objects to other players that join the world. So if another player joins, we'll call this player two, and player two is receiving updates about the objects from the room master. So what happens is if a player tries to go and then interact or pick up another object, what happens is something called ownership transfer, where ownership is actually transferred to player two that's joined here. And now player two becomes responsible for that game object, transmitting the, uh, this, this data of it and so forth. If more players join, let's say a third player joins the map, player three, um, player three is going to receive updates from player two and the room master because they both own game objects. And again, if player three tries to interact with one of these objects, um, we can either transfer ownership to player three um, or it happens automatically through uh, if it's a VR chat, like pick up a bubble object when they pick it up, then they they become owners of that object. And uh, with that, um, we can start writing our first Udon scripts to see what this looks like in Udon. OK, so if you were with us in the last episode, we had built these music controls. Um, but one of the problems was that if you invited other players into your world, no one else can hear the controls when you toggle the BGM on and off and when you change the volume. Um, that's because there was no sort of networking uh, that was added to make these buttons hearable by other players. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into these Unity uh, Udon scripts. Um, if you don't have the source, uh, you can grab a copy of the source code for this project in the comments and you can follow along. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and get out of play mode here. And I'm going to go down to the button and uh, I'm going to open up the Udon behavior we wrote the last episode. OK, so this is what our audio toggle looks like in Udon. Um, we have an event called Interact. So when a player goes and taps the BGM button, uh, event is sent to Udon, this interact event. And we're toggling whether or not the music is enabled or not here in this function. And this is done through getting a reference by creating a variable and storing a reference to our audio source here and checking if the audio source is enabled or disabled and then flipping the value. So we're toggling it um, basically on and off when someone clicks on the button. This is what this basic Udon script does. So in order to make this button networked, um, we're going to use a function called networking.setowner, which is available in Udon. If you hit space and type networking, um, you can have this function called set owner. What we're going to have to do is when someone interacts with our button toggle, we need to change the owner of this button to that, that user. So what, how we're going to do that is we're going to remove the interact noodle here. And we're going to, when I interact with this button, I'm going to call set owner, but we don't have a reference to the current button yet. So we're going to have to create a new variable. And we're going to call this, it's just a regular game object. So we have to reference the current game object here. So I'm going to create a game object. And this game object is just going to be the BGM button. I'm just going to call it a, well, we'll call it BGM button. And we're going to have to make this a public variable. So it's available in our inspector. So if we go down over here to the left, click on our button, we should see a new public variable here called BGM button. And you can see that it's actually automatically set to itself. So we're just going to leave that there. If it's not uh, set to itself, you can open up the menu here and then just select the button from the menu and it'll just reference itself. So once we have a variable here, we can go ahead and drag this BGM button toggle down here, which is the game object. 
And when someone interacts with this object, we're going to set the ownership of this button and we're going to set the ownership to the person interacting with the button. So how do we get the person interacting with the button? There is another special function. We'll hit spacebar called networking dot uh, networking dot um, get local player. Now the local player is the currently running uh, Unity client, the user that's interacting with our button. So we're going to take and draw another noodle from uh, get local player here over to player. So in our code that we just created, um, basically to sum it up, a user interacts with it. We change that the ownership of the object to be that user to be responsible for this uh, toggle object. And we're referencing which object the user is taking control over. So they're taking control over basically just this button. So the next thing we want to do is we need some way to tell other players whether or not the music is on or off. In order to do this, we have to create a networked variable, they're called. So I'm going to go hit plus in the top here. And we're going to create a bool value. A bool is a whether, you know, true or false uh, value. So I'm going to go create a bool and we're going to call this uh, boolean value playing. And playing is either going to be true or false. And this player, once they take ownership, it's going to be transmitting whether or not the music is on or off. So I'm going to go ahead and create that playing variable. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to expand that. And we're going to want to check this box that says synced. Synced means that this variable is going to be shared across for other players. So we're going to synchronize, create a synchronized variable. Um, you can leave it as none. Now, the next thing that we're going to want to do is we have to turn that playing variable on and off. So how do we do that? Um, there's a special function that will allow us to change this playing variable uh, between on and off. So we're going to go ahead and create a new object, a new node, and we're going to it's going to be an udon behavior. And we're going to click that and we're going to go set program variable. Set program variable is going to let us uh, change the value of a variable in our script here. So our name of our variable is called playing. I'm just going to type that in as the string. And this also needs an instance. Um, this set program variable needs an instance to the udon behavior itself. So how do we get reference the the udon behavior, which is this is running in? Um, what we can do on the right side here, there's an udon behavior script. You can actually drag the component onto the graph here, and that will reference. It's a terrible name. It's called button one. We don't want it to be called that. We'll just call this the udon program. So this references the current program that we're working in, and we're gonna go and give this instance, put it, create a noodle to set program variable. So set program variable, just to say this again, is going to set the playing value to the currently running Udon program, which I reference here. The next thing we need to do is we need to give it a value. So what are we setting the value of playing to? And we are basically going to reuse the code that we have here. I'm going to get rid of the noodles on the set enabled function here. And we're going to basically pipe the music's value, the flipped value, whether or not it's enabled or not. We're going to move that set it in here in set program variable. So our program starting to look like something here. So I'm going to read it out again. So a player interacts with the button, the BGM toggle. We change the ownership to the player that's interacted with the button and we're going to call set program variable. And what this is going to do is it's going to change our value of playing to the flipped value of get enabled unary negation that gets piped in here. And this player, if you remembered from the beginning of the video, is this owner is going to let other players know the value of whether playing is true or false. Okay, so bear with me here. We're almost there. Um, so this part of this program we've created is the networking component side of things. The next thing we have to do is actually turn the music on and off in the game client. So we're going to go back up here from the noodle that we broke off for turning the audio source on and off. And we're going to go ahead and add a another event called up um, another event called update if I can find it. Oops. Uh, where is this thing? Update event update. So event update for those that don't know, um, update is called every time uh, the frame is rendered. So this is called over and over and over again for each frame. 
uh, of the game client. And in this update function, we're going to continuously keep calling basically set enabled on audio source. We're going to give another instance. So we're going to go over here. We're going to drag music back here. We're going to get another reference to music and we're going to give it the instance of the music uh, object here. And we're going to add the playing value. So this is our special networked variable. Um, our synchronized variable, and this is going to be piped into the value right here. And what this is going to do is um, over and over, basically it's going to loop forever, and it's going to keep typing in the, whatever the value of playing is. Remember, we wrote this sort of networking component side here, and now this value is just going locally for the, the currently running player, it's going to be setting this value over and over again. Um, in the update loop that this way if playing changes. So for example, uh, if the room master toggles the button or another player toggles the button, all the clients will update to the correct value because this is a networked variable and it will update um, depending on who owns the who owns the object and sets the value. And that's all there is to it. So we can go ahead and launch uh, VR chat and see if this works. So we're gonna go ahead and make sure the number of clients is set to two and you're forcing non-VR mode. Go, go ahead and hit build and test. And by default, um, you know, when users enter the world, there's no music that's playing. So what we're looking for, uh, I just spawned in as a different character. So what we're looking for is if the other player, if I hit this toggle BGM button, we should hear the music play on both clients. So we should hear the music play twice with a little bit of delay. Let's go ahead and try it. And you can hear that the music is basically, it's running on both clients because you can hear it playing twice. So that's how we know it's worked. So if I go ahead and stop it, it stops. And that's how we know that networking is working. So that's all there is to doing the toggle button. All right, so the next thing we're gonna look at is getting this volume control working. Um, so let's go back to the editor. And we're gonna use the exact same technique we used here, but for the slider. So we're gonna go ahead and click on the slider and we already have an Udon script that we created in the last episode. We're going to open this up and um, we're going to take a look at our little uh, slider event script that we wrote. So just a refresher on what this does. Um, when someone changes the value of the slider, an event is sent called on value changed and this sets the volume locally for the client. But we want to get makes this uh, volume control be heard from other players. So how do we do that? So I'm going to drag this out of the way. And uh, we're gonna go up here. And again, um, what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna want to um, have some interaction. So we wanna, um, when someone interacts with this object, um, we wanna change its owner to the, the player that's interacting with it. So again, we're gonna go ahead and add an interact event. And we're gonna add networking and get the local player again. So the local player interacting with the object. And we're also gonna wanna create an instance to the slider object. So there's already a reference to the actual object right here called slider. And what we're gonna do is, oh, this is not the game object, so we're gonna delete this. Um, we're gonna create a new game object variable and it's just gonna be a game object. And we're not gonna call the slider, we're gonna call this like the self, like the current object. And we're gonna make this variable public so we can set it in the inspector. And you notice that automatically self is just populated with self, the current this current game object here. So. That's what we want. I'm gonna drag self down here. And we're, again, we're gonna call networking and we're gonna call set owner. So we're gonna change the ownership of the object to the player that's interacting with this object. And we're gonna set the, uh, basically give it control of the, the current object here on our right side, the slider object. So next thing again, what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna get remove these noodles from the set volume object. And the values from these programs are actually gonna go into that Udon behavior set program variable. And we're gonna have to create another networked variable that's shared amongst other players. And we're gonna call this variable called, uh, it's gonna be a float. And the value is just gonna be called volume. And volume is going to be our networked variable that we're gonna create. And we're gonna make it synced. Again, you can just leave it as none. And we're gonna move the volume down. Uh, we actually don't need the volume in the scene. So when we call set program variable, we're gonna set the volume. And what value are we gonna set this network variable? Well, we're gonna set it to the current value of the slider that the user's interacting with. 
So that's going to go into value. And again, we're going to need an instance of this Udon program. So again, we can go ahead and uh, let's just go ahead and create one here. So a new variable called Udon behavior. And we're just going to call this the Udon program. And we're going to make it public and basically assign it. You can see that in the bottom right here, self is already assigned the current Udon behavior. So that's exactly what we want. We're gonna drag it down here into the scene and we're gonna pipe that into our instance and set program variable. And this is going to set our little network variable to whatever value the current slider is at. It's gonna call this and set the variable. So the next thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is similar to how we did the toggle button, we need an update loop, something that's going to consistently set the volume with whatever the current uh, value is set to. So we're gonna go ahead and make another update event, event update. And update is going to consistently, uh, constantly loop and call the set volume function. And we're going to reference the music object here to what we're setting the volume of. And our value again is going to be that network variable that we created. So when the person takes ownership of the object and they change the volume, they're going to set this volume network variable. So I'm going to drag it down here and uh, it's going to tell other players what the value is. So we're just going to leave that sort of like a game loop that's going to run over and over again, setting this networked variable to this value of the, 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 the volumes value. And I, that should be it. So that's everything we need. So I'm going to run over it again, just uh, so everyone can follow. So someone uh, interacts with the object. The current player interacts with the slider. We change the owner of this uh, slider object to be the local player. And an event is sent. Oh, we forgot to attach a noodle. So uh, when the slider changes, we're going to set our networked variable when, someone in when the owner interacts with the slider. Um, you can see that they were set up here. Now when they interact with it and change the value, they set it to some certain value. And in the game loop, um, we're gonna constantly read the networked variable. So for all the clients are going to be running this game loop and they're going to be waiting for the value to change of this networked variable and update the volume control. Okay, so we're almost ready to go, but we have one problem. And that's because the event interact does not actually get set for sliders. For buttons in VR chat, an interact event is set, but there is no event set up um, that triggers the interact event when someone touches the slider. That means we have to add it manually. So I'm gonna show, go over to Udon Graph. Um, on our right side, we're gonna go click add component and we're gonna add what's called an event trigger. And in the event trigger, we're gonna add a new event type and we're gonna go make it so that uh, we're gonna call this pointer down. So the second someone clicks to start dragging our slider, we're gonna send this pointer down event. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the pointer down event here in the event that we just created. We're gonna hit add, and we're gonna go ahead and drag our Udon behavior down here into the object where we wanna send the event. And we're actually gonna manually send an interact event. So we're gonna to go to Udon behavior and we're gonna have all the events that we can send to this object and we're gonna go select interact. So that's going to make our interact event work, which is going, the second someone clicks to hold down to move the slider, we're gonna change the ownership of the slider to be that user. And then what's gonna happen is when the slider changes, that user is going to update the volume controls and that value is then going to be synced out to all the other players to update the volume. Okay, so let's go over to our VRChat SDK panel. Let's launch two clients and see if this works. Hit build and test. Okay, so it, this should now be networked. So if I click on the toggle BGM, should play for both of the clients. You can hear the music is being played uh, on both. But if now if we select this and drag, we should hear the music shut off. And you can see that the sound silences on both clients. So we know it's working we can turn it up and turn it off again. And that's all there is to it. Now we have network volume controls for our world.